One of the most difficult and unnerving parts of my job is that I often have to rely upon law enforcement witnesses um, to make out my case, whether or not I'm defending a person or whether or not I'm trying to actually help a person that's been injured in an accident. The reason why that's difficult is because of a couple of things. First, I don't have access to them in the same ways that I would have access to a private expert witness that we actually retain on our own. Second, um, I'm concerned about whether or not they're going to be reliable and predictable and what it is that they're going to say. So that goes along with the access. Um, a lot of times whenever you're dealing with a law enforcement officer, um, there are a handful that I can point out to you and say, I know exactly that what they tell me privately is what it is that they're going to testify to publicly in court. Um, but the rest of them are sort of um, mealy mouthed about it. They'll, um, they'll tell you one thing in private and say, hey, let's hold this between us. And then they'll advocate for the state whenever they go in there in some way, shape or form. Now, there are things that you can do despite not having access to them, despite them not being predictable. Um, whenever you do have conversations with them prior to trial, try to have a motion hearing. Um, so, and also try to gauge in those conversations that you have with the witnesses, whether or not you think, whether or not you feel like their opinions are fixated. Um, so are they willing to make some concessions that you need in order to make out your case? Because I, quite frankly, I deal with a lot of clients who don't have the ability to pay $8,500, $10,000, $12,000 for an expert ultimately to come in and give an opinion in the case. And, and that's really the range that I, need, I think that most people need to be thinking about whenever they're evaluating, am I gonna have the funds for a really good accident reconstructionist to come in and help me in the case? Um, so if, you're, if a client's thinking about that and they know that they cannot afford it, then you need to be preparing accordingly um, because a lot of the cases, quite honestly, just need to be tried based on the factual issues that are present. And, um, and you need to figure out how it is that you're going to address those state expert witnesses if you don't have the money to retain your expert or whether or not the, the economics of the case just don't make it, make it sensible. Um, so what I'm gonna post up after this is a picture of a case that, that involved a scrape. Um, the officer characterized it as a gouge at one point in time, a scrape as another. That, as it turns out, that's pretty important. I think it's pretty clear that it's a scrape and it came from a bicycle. And uh, generally, those scrapes or gouges are indicative of where it is that an officer believes that the initial contact between a car and another car or a car and a bicycle or a car and a motorcycle occurred. Um, as it turned out, it wasn't very reliable in terms of, of where it actually occurred, given the facts of the case. Um, and there was no effort by the officer to match up where the scrape allegedly occurred from the bicycle um, and how it is that, that the bicycle actually came into contact with the road, which was another important issue. That officer ultimately in that case gave me what I needed on that particular issue of whether or not the, the bicycle was in the lane of travel or not. Because if you look at the scrape itself, you would think, hey, that bicycle is outside the lane of travel. If a car came into contact with them, obviously the car was, was at fault um, for striking that bicycle. As it turned out, whenever he testified at trial, and, and I knew this going into it, that he was going to make some concessions. He was gonna advocate a little bit for the state, but that he would ultimately make the concessions that I needed about whether or not he could determine based upon the scrape, the positioning of the bicycle at the time of impact. So it ultimately worked out well, well for us on that issue. Um, if you have any questions about this, kind of strategic considerations that I have whenever I approach those cases where I don't have an expert on my behalf, um, feel free to call me. My name is Ben Sessions. My phone number is 470-225-7710. Again, 470-225-7710. Thank you.